After just getting what was basically a build-up chapter before Mokuba's Death Tea stage, I almost lumped this chapter, which is basically just another build-up chapter, in with the next duel. Because I am going to be covering the entirety of Yugi and Kaiba's duel all at once. I don't remember if they break it up at all, but I'm pretty sure that they do. But regardless of that, I am going to be talking about it all in one review, and I almost lumped this in with it. That is actually what I had planned to do ahead of time before going back and rereading this chapter in preparation for reviewing it. I just didn't remember anything super important happening in this chapter, despite the fact that it does have a cool title. Whereas that build up to the fight with Mokuba, that chapter had the whole reveal of the other Yugi to Yugi's friends. That's an important moment, and I just didn't remember anything that important happening here, but I was wrong. When I went back to reread this chapter, I was reminded that this is actually the chapter when Mokuba's character has a sort of turnaround, when he reaches that point where he is finally on the path to become the Mokuba that we see later on in the series. He's lost to Yugi again, and is shocked that he lost to Yugi again, despite the fact that he basically tried the same tactic against Yugi that Yugi defeated the last time. He really does come across as someone who is beating his head against the wall over and over again, hoping that something will change, figuratively speaking at least, which ties back to his relationship with his brother. He keeps trying to impress his brother. He keeps trying to get his brother to show him some kind of affection, and it just isn't happening. So after he loses here, and then Kaiba comes onto the screen above the stadium, announces the next stage of the game, and then declares that because Mokuba lost, he must face the holographic penalty game, the experience of death. And Yugi actually turns around and comes back to the duel box and pulls Mokuba out, rescuing him from that illusion. It finally clicks in Mokuba's mind that his brother is just not the kind of person he can rely on right now. When he questions why Yugi would help him and Yugi points out that Yugi wouldn't be where he is today without the bonds that he shares with people, Mokuba is finally able to realize that he's never going to be able to form a bond with his brother, the bond that he wants with his brother, as his brother is now. He acknowledges that there's a darkness in his brother's heart. He calls it a demon of gaming here. And while he doesn't say anything about it out loud, he does at the very least acknowledge it to himself, and that's a major step for his character. And now he has real hopes riding on Yugi. He hopes that somehow Yugi will be able to get through to his brother and bring him back, bring his original brother back to him. But as Yugi marches towards that duel with Kaiba, he is far less hopeful about it. He knows that he has to win this duel to save his grandfather, but he honestly doesn't think that he can. He honestly believes that in the current state of duel monsters, there is no way to defeat three blue eyes white dragons, and frankly, as long as we're talking about conventional means, he is right. Like anyone who's watched the first episode of the Yu-Gi-Oh anime will know that obviously he finds a way to pull it off with a very unconventional method. But just just using regular tactics, he doesn't see a way to do it, and so this is the first time that Yugi goes into a fight expecting to lose, expecting not to be able to win. But he has to. He has to win. Meanwhile, we get a little bit of an aside with Jinoji and Anzu. I'm assuming because the goon that pulled the gun on them was ordered to do so by Mokuba and not Kaiba, and now Kaiba is in charge of the situation instead of Mokuba. He doesn't straight up shoot Jinochi when Jinochi snatches his cell phone from him and uses it to call the hospital where Sugoroku is being treated. Hanasaki's there. I don't remember if we were told that Hanasaki was there, and I don't know how they would have gotten him there in the first place. But he's there, and we're able to, through him, get an update on Sugoroku's condition. Just to remind us one more time what the stakes are, and to put something of a ticking clock on Yugi's battle with Kaiba, because... Sugoroku's not doing well. Things are getting worse. I mean, Hanasaki didn't have to be there for them to get this information. They could have gotten it from a generic nurse or doctor character as well. But it is nice that in this chapter where Yugi is able to change someone, in this case Mokuba, via the strength of his bonds, that Takahashi remembered to include one of Yugi's extended group of friends when he had the opportunity to do so. We get the very start of Yugi's duel with Kaiba at the very end of the chapter, and Yugi actually wins the first exchange, but it doesn't really matter. It's implied here that Kaiba lost on purpose just to show how unconcerned he is with Yugi in the first place. And then that's it. The chapter's over. And it's perfectly fine. It works really well as a build-up chapter. And like I said, the character stuff for Mokuba here is actually really good. But I still get the sense that a lot of this, while not bad, again, I want to stress that it's not bad, isn't entirely necessary. It is, in its own way, padding. It's padding this arc out to make it longer and seem more epic. Just like the fear roller coaster thing that we got a few chapters ago. Still, if you're reading this for the character stuff and not just for the gaming action, I don't think this is one that you should skip or anything. After all, just because something can be qualified as padding doesn't mean that it isn't enjoyable to read. And that's pretty much how I feel about this chapter. It does come off as being a little padded out, 
but it's still enjoyable. Also, just as a quick side note, I really like the other Yugi's reactions in this chapter, the way that they're drawn. I can't really explain it, but I just feel like that particular aspect of the art in this chapter is just particularly good. All that said, though, guys, if you have read this chapter of Yu-Gi-Oh!, what do you think of it? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below or over on my Discord. Link in the description. And get ready, guys, because next week it will finally be time to talk about the climax of the Death T arc. Until then, though, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.